Hey everybody, today we're going to go over basic troubleshooting steps that we used to bring this non-functioning salt cell or incorrectly functioning salt cell back into full operation. Before you go and call out a service or you end up needlessly buying a new salt cell for no reason, spending over $500, try these simple steps and repair it yourself for free. Let's get started. First and foremost, with regard to maintenance, you cannot ignore the inspect cell light. When that light is flashing, you have to remember that there is at least a three month maintenance cycle as indicated on the sticker on the left hand side. And looking at that sticker, that light should only be extinguished with these instructions after maintenance has been conducted on the cell. If you shut off that light without conducting the maintenance, yeah, you're gonna have problems. Inspect cell every three months, clean if necessary. I have a video linked to that right up here in the top right corner. Click that link. If you haven't cleaned the cell or you don't remember the last time you cleaned it, you have to clean it before you continue with any troubleshooting. It causes a lot of these problems with this thing. Not only is it inhibited from producing chlorine when it's calced up, but it can't give you an accurate measurement of the salinity of the water. So you're going to get inaccurate readings too. Also, there's a lot of garbage that forms in there when it's filled up, not just calc. So you're going to have flow problems. And that's something to keep in mind if you're troubleshooting no flow conditions. I'll point out this one received maintenance three days ago. So while every indication looks good on the display panel, you're looking in your pool, everything's starting to turn green, and you don't know why. Let's take a look. Before the video started, I had done a recalibration, which I'm going to demonstrate shortly. And based on those numbers, I added a small amount of salt. And you can see that now it's saying high salt. It's very strange. So what I'm going to do is I want to look at the actual. When I hit the diagnostic five times, you can see that negative sign. This denotes the real-time salt level. These devices are designed to turn on briefly and intermittently to read the salinity of the water to see if it's changed. This time in taking a reading, it went from high to 1200. Again, very strange. We run it one more time. I want to see what the live value is. So I'm shutting it off. I'm turning it back on. I'm hitting the diagnostic five times. Again, we're going to have to wait for it to click on. Like I said, it turns on long enough just to get that value, see what's going on, if it's allowed to operate. And those numbers are all moving around very erratically, too. Also pointing towards a problem. But this time, it's settling down. We're seeing about 2,600 this time, which is just outside the bounds, but not way off 2,500. So now at this point, again... We're seeing a discrepancy. 1200 is what's on display, but we did see running 2500. It's out of calibration. That's for starters. And this is something that's not documented and people need to know about. Once in a while, and because of certain circumstances, the device does not calibrate or effectively calibrate these values. So I'm going to show you now how we calibrate this. I'm shutting the device off. I'm bringing it back to auto. We're going to let it turn on we're going to wait for that click or we could hit the button five times right now either or doesn't matter but I got that click I'm going to hit it five times we're going to look for that minus symbol and I want these numbers to settle down right there settle down I bring it up to super chlorinate and back down auto we've just calibrated the device when the timer runs out this comes back to our main display screen we will see that minus sign disappear and the main screen that average over time should be roughly that number give or take a hundred or so off of that value you see now the minus symbol has gone and that 26 closely reflects the 26 that is the instantaneous value just like that that's how you calibrate of course we're going to get a check salt light because uh we're sitting right there at the threshold. But we are going to have to address another issue here because another issue was found, those erratic numbers, the way this is behaving. Because if I add just a minute amount of salt, now we have a high salt condition. Something's definitely wrong still. And I think we just identified it. Take a look at that. We're seeing a T3 here. And we should have checked this first because if we look at the cell, we said I'm running a T cell 15. And we did take a, a, a power outage last week. And I really wish they designed this with a dip switch. But let me show you something. If we go through our diagnostic to the T right here, what you want to do is flip from auto up to superchlorinate and back down. 
over and over again until you get to your cell configuration. Again, not a good design. They should have used dip switches or something, not non-volatile RAM to store this. But once we do that, we turn it off and we turn it back on. And we're going to do the calibration again because that calibration was worthless now that we're on the correct cell. We'll let it click on. And now it's settled down much more uniformly. And we can see it coming now to 33, a much different number, just on the high side of the threshold. 33 is good. We're going to lock that into place now, superchlorinate back to auto, and we have a nice number. Look at that. There was nothing wrong with any of the equipment. It was just a configuration setting. We're sitting here now at 33, and we're running. No problem at all. If you had any of these issues and you just resolved them, you just saved over $500 by spending five minutes troubleshooting. For the sake of completeness, it's also worth pointing out that should the temperature go under 50 degrees Fahrenheit, it will also stop generating and will also throw a light. That's not a problem. It's a design feature. So if you do have uh, cold environments, you will see this. Moving onward to no-flow troubleshooting, we see the indicator light over here. And under the unit is an RJ11 receptacle and I remove the cable from it, we see the no flow light come on and we'll take a closer look at that connector and we can see that there are two pins inside that connector. I'm going to shut off the unit right now and I'm going to remove it and insert it a couple of times to clean that connector against the wipers. After doing this a couple times to remove any oxidation, I'll connect it back in to see if it cleared up any problem I might have. Generally, if you have an auto priming pump or a high speed pump, they turn on like this, it's no flow, and the second it kicks on, it starts priming at high speed. You start to see the no flow light blink, and then after a time, as the pump settles down, it should go to generating. And if you have a blockage, once it starts coming down to its normal speed, it jumps right to no flow. You know it's a blockage issue uh, to a high degree of certainty. Could be a problem with the switch, but probably not. Right, but if it jumps like this, once it slows down to its normal operating speed, it's probably a blockage issue in the generator. You have to ask yourself, when was the last time you did maintenance on the unit? The switch itself is mechanical, so yes, it can break. But if we look at the PVC pipe, we see the arrow here pointing downward. That is the direction of water flow. And we can see this is the actual switch. And if we look at the switch from the side, there are markings on the switch right here, also arrows that point down in the same direction. I can't imagine the switch would accidentally move if it's worked before, so the chances of that are slim. This switch could be easily tested doing a continuity test with a multimeter. We can see that I'm shutting off the chlorinator, and I'm opening up the panel that turns my pump on and off. And I'm going to pull that cable out of the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this continuity test for both pins. I'm quickly going to turn on the pump and reconnect it. As the pump starts to fire up and move water, we're going to hear the beep as the switch is closed and the contact makes a circuit. And there it is. So when from off to on is flow started, we know that the switch is good. If you are having a problem in this situation, it may be dirty contacts, as I had mentioned before. Nothing more. Again, remembering that if the no flow light activates once the priming stops, it could be a flow issue. Take a look inside that unit. Make sure it doesn't need maintenance. And with that, we're going to wrap this up. We covered flow issues. We covered recalibration that's not documented. And we also covered misconfigurations that could be lost in the non-volatile RAM due to power surges and what have you. If you do these things, you're going to save yourself a lot of money by not having to have unnecessary service calls or the cost of parts replacements that you don't need. Hope you enjoyed this video. Click that like button down below. Helps me out a lot when you do. Hit that subscribe button for more videos. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply?